Hi, Vesta. Okay. Let, hey, Sharon. Let me flip the camera around. And I got to do one more flip. Hold on. There we go. There we go. Good morning, everybody. Boy, it feels like every day we've been meeting here, huh? So, so awesome. Um, a lot going on. The Last Chance uh, product from the mini catalog has gone live. So if you go to Stampin' Up's website, you will find a link and you can find everything that's on sale. Um, I got to place a pre-order the other day for the um, July to December mini catalog. I'm excited about that. I also ordered the thank you gifts for those who placed um, a $50, at least a $50 order with me in the month of May. So I got those goodies ordered. Those will mail out um, at the time that the barn quilt um, card kits mail out. That way I can combine for some of you, I can combine everything in one package. Let me see why my phone isn't letting me see. Hmm. Why can't I see comments on my phone? There we go. Hey, Lori, I could see like little blips and I just didn't touch one thing on my phone. So Lori and Nancy, hey, my wonky sister. Uh, Tony, hello. Hi, Josephine and Nadine. If I missed your name, it's already scrolled by. I'm so sorry. Um, technology, you know, it throws you a curb. And I almost thought I was going to be late going live because um, the washing machine decided to go off balance and it sounded like it was walking right across the basement stair, the basement floor so I had to take care of that oh and one other thing this morning I did have makeup on but we decided we DVR'd the last episodes of this is us and we watched the third to the last episode and oh, oh my I don't know how I'm going to get through the last two episodes of this um of this of this incredible incredible show so um i the eye makeup is gone <laughs> so, you know what are you gonna do um i think you're really gonna enjoy today's project we are going to make one large patchwork and then we are going to cut it up and create four card fronts um, when I flip the camera around, I will show you my examples, which I did, of course, in the Hues of Happiness. It's everybody's favorite. But what I'm going to be using today is the um, Heart and Home Designer Series paper that's in the um, mini catalog that will retire at the end of the month. So I'm using that designer series paper, some of the elements from that suite, but I'm combining them with the um, lovely and lasting uh, product. And all this product is current in the new catalog. Um, but I'm just, I just want to show you that, you know, we can mix and match what we have to work with and um you can be really pleasantly surprised how you know it can go together so i'm going to show you that i just was playing with two different things and um we'll get started so let me flip the camera around again <laughs> hold on Just move some things back a little bit. Hmm. 
Okay, I think that looks good. Looks good on the computer. Okay, so these are the samples that I made with the um, Hues of Happiness. Oh, for those of you who are tuning in for the first time, my name is Julie Heights. I call myself the Chirpy Card Maker of Quilts and More. And welcome to my Facebook Live. Please let us know where you're watching from. Hi, Susan. Michaeline. Okay, I'm going to get caught up here for just a second with names. <laughs> um, hi, Jean. Thank you for those who have shared. Hey, Sharon and Peggy. All right. I think I'm caught up. Okay. So, yes, these are the examples. And you know, this is just a fun way to um, start out using large pieces instead of um, normally with our quilt cards, we, we work with smaller pieces of paper. But what I wanted to um, demonstrate is we can, we don't have to work so small. We can actually start out large, we can chop it up, and um, it it might be easier for some. Um, so I just wanna be able to, hi Brenda, hi Flo. I just wanna be able to kind of meet everybody on their level and um, make it easier for some. And um, so it's really like less cutting so many tiny pieces. And um, anyway, you'll see when we get started, okay? I am working on a PDF for this. I will be going out of town tomorrow through Sunday. Um, hi, Janice. Hi, Joanne. And uh, so I'm going to take my laptop with me and continue working on the PDF but I will give you the dimensions where you can start making this out on a large grid. Or if you've got smaller scraps, I'll give you the dimensions for just an individual card. Okay? So, got a little bling going on with the iridescent rhinestones. I love that the iridescent rhinestones actually takes on the colors that are underneath the gem. So I thought that was really, really, really cool. So there were the example cards. And like I said, I'm going to be using something totally different today. So June started a new host code, which is right here. If you place an order under $150 through my online um, store. If you would kindly enter this host code in where it prompts you to, it helps me earn rewards that I in turn, I buy little goodies for you and I send them out um, for, for that month. It's usually a couple weeks after the new month starts, but Using this helps me uh, be able to do that. Now, if your order is over $150, they won't, the system won't even let you put this in because you have earned all those rewards for yourself, which is pretty awesome, and you get to reap the benefits, okay? All right. So, what I wanted to show you really quick this is the designer series paper I'm going to be working with. It's the heart and home. Um, this, the paper did not carry over to the new annual catalog, but the, um, the stamp set and the dies did and the bundle 10% savings carried over to the annual catalog. I am going to, I pulled out the denim ribbon that is retiring. I pulled out my doilies. Um, the, the dots carried over, but I pulled some things from 
what will be retiring with what is current. And then I paired, so this is the Blessings of Home bundle. This did carry over at 10%. I stamped, I used a couple of the stamps. I did pull out some greenery that I had um, die cutted before. I don't think it's going to work, but you could um, die cut some of the greener greenery and stick it on your card. You know, if, if you're, if you're a um, crafter who really likes to adorn your cards, you could use the little greenery there. And then my new favorite, probably until I get some of the new stuff that I got to order, is the lovely and lasting bundle. I just love this. I, I love this stamp and the punch that punches it out. I just love it. I I love the fonts. I, I just love this bundle. It's my favorite right now. So I'm going to combine the two. And we're going to see how it's going to work out. Because I haven't... I didn't like do this... Um, do these cards ahead of time. I'm doing them with you. So we'll see if it all works out the way it, it plays in my mind right now. We shall see. So I posted a photo yesterday of what our pattern looks like. This is like full strength, so to speak. And this was inspired by placemats on a quilting site. You can get a lot of inspiration from mug rug patterns and placemats because they, you know, the mug rugs aren't that much bigger than a card. You can scale those patterns down. And with placemats, you find the right pattern. You can cut it up into fours and have four card fronts. So that's what intrigued me about this. So the pattern measures a total of seven and a half inches this way, 10 inches this way. And what we're going to do is when we're done gluing our pieces down, we are going to cut it in half in both directions and get our four card fronts that will already be pieced together. Yes, you're going to use more, ad, you know, your adhesive, but really it's not anymore if you did these individually. Um, we're just going to start large and then go small. Hi, Pat. You made it. Hi, Patricia. Okay, so... This is my pattern that I want to save for my files. So what I did was I drew myself another one just to go by. So your focal, if you were using, you know, making placemats, your focal fabric would be this large square here, but we're going to use designer series paper. And that focal image is five and a half by eight. Sometimes we're left with pieces of designer series paper that we've cut down that actually ends up about this size. So here I have my five and a half by eight. And what I am going to do is I am just going to, now you could do, you could put your glue down on the back of your designer series paper. I'm just going to go around the outside and then give it a good, kind of figure out your halfway um, and make sure you get a little bit more glue in there because when you chop it up, you can always go back and, and you'll find if you've got any paper that's that lifted up. But I kind of try to take care of that from the very beginning. And we're going to lay that designer series paper right down in the center. And now what we're going to do is we're going to work our way out. So for my borders, what I chose to coordinate with this 
paper was the cinnamon cider bees. So you can start putting your borders down the sides or the top and bottom first. It doesn't matter. But this is what my pattern is going to start out looking like. And then for my cornerstones, I went with the greens that was in, that is in the designer series paper pack. So this is what it's going to look like. Okay. So we'll just get to gluing those down. Is anybody else doing this with me? I'm just going to start on the sides here. Just lay some liquid glue down. Make sure, as always, make sure you're not too heavy handed. Just going to butt the papers up to each other really nicely, making, you know, try to be nice and straight. That's the great thing about grid paper. You've got lines there to help keep you straight. You, if you're using a directional paper, um, when we cut these up and spin them around, you might not be able to keep that direction, but you'll, you'll figure out what you want to do with it. So this goes together really fast. I think it's, you know, it's a good pattern to have that you're not having to cut out so many smaller individual pieces. You can just go with your long large cuts of paper and then just cut it down. See how quickly it's going together? Just put that in there like that. We're going to cut this off of the grid paper so you'll be able to square it up in case any of your paper is hate um landing outside of the margins. If it's easier for you to put the glue on the back of your designer series paper, go, go for it. You want to do what's, whatever is easier for you. Use all those lines to help keep you straight. So you see where this could be a placemat or a mug rug? Mug rugs are, I think, I've seen them in different sizes. But typically I think it's like half of what a placemat might be. And they're designed to... Um, be big enough you can put a little plate with some sweets on it for breakfast and your coffee uh, or whatever beverage that you're drinking just to have a cute little mat underneath you. Okay, so that's that part. Yay, Tony's playing along, Vesta. Yes, and Susan. Oh, and Josephine. Yay. Cool. Okay, so the glue is might want to give it a minute to help that glue dry, but what we're going to do now, I'll put the cap back on for a minute, is I'm going to slide this back just a little bit so I can bring in my trimmer. And we're going to cut, cut it off the grid paper. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my grid paper lines and line that up 
in the track. Kind of cheating just a little bit instead of measuring it out. Because, I mean, I already drew it out on the paper. So, the only thing I'm taking off is anything that might have, you know, been sticking out there. So, I'm just going to use those lines on the grid paper and put them in the track. And just cheat a little bit. As long as I didn't go way outside of the pattern, I'm going to be good. One more. Okay. So now we've got, isn't that a pretty patchwork? This would make a really pretty book cover or something that you could do. So, so pretty. Um, I'm going to put my arm out here and I would not be a good teacher if I didn't say we should check our, check our, um, dimensions. So there's 10 inches. I got my 10 inches the long way and this should be seven and a half and I am right in the track. So I'm at seven and a half by 10. Now we're going to cut it in half. So I'm already in portrait mode. Half of seven and a half is three and three quarters. So I am going to put the left side of my, my patchwork here. I'm going to put that on three and three quarters. I'm going to close the guard here. And I'm going to chop it up that way okay now I'm just gonna move everything around I'm gonna put it back you can do these individually I'm gonna put it back on um, half of 10 is 5 so you know what these are pretty thin I'm just gonna stack them on top of each other make sure they're lined up Put it on five. I know that my blade can handle these two layers. And then chop them again. So now we have our four pieces. That's going to be our four cards. Now would be the time, if you want to do any embossing, to do that. I think I am going to step out of the camera for just a second. And I'm going to do a couple of these. Yeah, that's going back that way. Yeah, so there you've got your four quarters, okay? So I am going to, I'm going to emboss with the Pretty Flowers embossing folder a couple of these. I'm not going to do, have you have to sit through and watch me do all four cards. But just talk amongst yourselves. Share any ideas that you might have. I'm, I'm hoping this embossing folder works as the way I think it will. Da, 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 da. One more. I'll put this over here so you can see how lofty and pretty See the difference that embossing versus flat? The difference the feels it gives you? Okay. So this is the pretty flowers. This is the embossing folder. Look at the deboss side. Isn't that gorgeous? I love it. I love it. 
So that's the pretty flowers embossing folder. So again, the different feels, you've got this lofty quilt feel when you emboss. And then you also have the nice crisp flat look when you do nothing. Okay, just wanted to show you the differences there. Now, I also had posted that you were going to need some um, layering cardstock. So I had you. I'm, I'm going to go with white, just basic white on mine, because I wanted my card bases to be the colored card stock. So those are my card bases. And why did I choose those colors? I pulled colors that out of the designer series paper that I'm using, okay? So standard card base finishes at four and a quarter by five and a half. That's the overall dimensions. You can cut your card stock two ways. You can cut your cardstock at four and a quarter by 11 and score it in half at five and a half. Or you can cut your cardstock five and a half by eight and a half and score it at four and a quarter to make your card base. I've done two card bases like this, which was four and a quarter by 11, scored it in half at five and a half. And I did two cards this way, which it's eight and a half by five and a half. And then I scored it at four and a quarter. So I got two of each. This here finishes at three and three quarters by five. So what I did was I cut my layer underneath four by five and a quarter. I just stepped it up a quarter of an inch. And so when I put this down and glue it down, I have a pretty white border all the way around. And then it will layer onto the colored card stock like that. So what I wanna do before I start gluing all the, of the layers down is if I'm going to be using any ribbon, I want to do that. You could you could do it either way. You could, in fact, now I'm wondering what it would look like if instead of putting the ribbon behind just the DSP, what would it look like if I carried it off? <gasps> Uh-oh. <laughs> Oh, the cats would love that, but they're not around. Now, I don't have any misty moonlight in the pa the papers that I've chosen, but I looked at some card examples, and it seemed to work even if you don't. So I was, instead of using the evening evergreen, I think this ribbon will work just as well, but... I thought, ooh, what if I had some options here? So I think I'm going to try the denim ribbon. It's working for me. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to wrap it around and I'm going to I'm going to carry it off of the white. I think I like that. I'm going to do something different that I didn't do before. So, let's go ahead and glue this down. I can always do one this way. I've got three more cards to play with, right? <laughs> you got three other chances to work out any ideas that pop into your head. And we know that happens. Once you get started, the ideas just come, come flying in. Where's my silicone? So let's go ahead and put this down.
And then when I'm, I use just scotch tape on the back when I want to wrap some ribbon around. So, and you can, you, you could do your ribbon this way. You can do your ribbon this way. I'm going to leave that up to you. I guess if you were looking at your paper and, you know, were you going to create a landscape card or are you creating a portrait card, then those are all things to consider. This is going to be whatever it's going to have to be by the when I'm done adding things to it. <laughs> so I'm just going to line that up about there, flip it over hold it and put some scotch tape on there. And then just want to make sure I'm straight when I put it around. I really like that it's wrapping around the very outside layer. Okay, so we'll put some more scotch tape down. straight okay so now I choose what card base do I want to use for this and do I like the orientation I think I'm gonna keep it like this so that's portrait mode let's bring in The, um, this is called, ay, ay, ay. it's on the tip of my tongue and I can't remember. Pale papaya. We're going to bring in the pale papaya. Yeah, I like that. Now I've already glued my card inserts into my card bases. So I'm going to glue this down. I thought that this was um, a really good design to use so that you can whip out a lot of cards if you have to. So we got that. Now I'm going to tie an, a knot. I'm going to go under here and tie a knot, but what I want to do first is I've got, here are the, now I'm working in the lovely and lasting stamp set and punch. But as you notice, these two sayings right here, this is from Heart and Home. But they fit with this stamp and punch really well. So those two sentiments are heart and home. These two are from the lovely and lasting. So I've got my, my sentiments. I just need to, um, let's use this one. Where do I want this? Maybe like right down here in the corner. So I will tie my knot. I'm going to cut off another piece of the denim ribbon. I'm going to slide it underneath there and I'm going to tie a knot. I need to turn it. I've been practicing a tip that Karen Titus, who is my upline, had um, shown us about when you're tying your knot to help it lay flatter. So when I tuck this under, I've got this tail in my right hand. 
I am only going to pull with my left hand. And my knot is flatter than had I done it the other way. It takes some getting used to not to just want to pull your hands at the same time. But I held tight with my right. And then um, pulled with my left. Okay. And then we're just going to, I love this denim on here. And I did not, I don't have any of this color going on in here other than the ribbon. <gasps> I love it. And all I'm going to do now is I'm going to pop this simple sentiment up with dimensionals. This, this card goes really quick. Where are my dimensionals? Oh. These are quick and easy cards so that you can whip out a boatload. Oh my goodness, I really like this combination here. I gotta bring it down to me. My wonky sister understands. Get that tail out of the way there. Don't mind if you're laying on top, but you gotta let me get it in there. Okay. So, here is my card. All that's left is some embellishments. And um, I notice my flowers are upside down. They're falling. Somebody threw them and they're falling. <laughs> I don't think anybody's really going to notice that. But my bees are, in, are going the right direction. Okay, so I pulled out two different embellishments. I've got the classic matte dots, which are part of the suite for Heart and Home. I stamped in basic gray the sentiments. So I was thinking about using the gray dots or in the current catalog is the um, new opal rounds and I was thinking about maybe pulling out the evening evergreen gems. Um, or I could do the fresh freesia. So what, what do you think? Which, which ones should, what would you use? Would you pull out the fresh freesia? Would you pull out the pale papaya? Um, do you like the gray or my other, my other go-to? I can't get away from them. Where are they? Where's the rustic? I just love these, but I mean, that metal added to the denim could be really, really nice. But, you know... What what are your thoughts? Just seeing if anybody I mean we've got I've got three more cards to play with, right? I could do anything. Um I'm going to stick with my very first. Let's just I got three more cards I can change it up if I want to, right? So let's use the basic gray. It helps pull out the grays that are in the bumblebee. Um, sheet of designer series paper. I'm just really noticing how upside down my paper is. Oh. Let's just put maybe... 
one right there. And let's go off and let's do something up here on that panel. And then one more. Maybe our eye likes to see a triangle and in groups, things in groups of three. Let's just put one. Maybe down here in the corner. So my card is done. You could put some designer series paper on the inside, put a strip at the top or bottom to dress that up. This may surprise you, but I'm not doing anything to my back. <laughs> and I've got some buttons here, some different colored buttons. Um, I'll decide which one, but I'm gonna keep this really clean and simple on the back and let the focus be, because we've got a lot of designer series paper on the front. So there's one of the cards. And as you can see, you can just keep going, changing. What I would like to do is I would like to make a card and that they not all be in the same orientation. Um, is this another? Oh, this is a landscape one. So, but here my paper is now, we could do it that way. But you just want to play around, lay out, I would lay out all of your four um, focal points. And maybe you're going to do all portrait cards portrait layout cards, but I would just play with where the paper falls in the design. Now here would be a good landscape one because at least that flower is going in the right direction. If I would have noticed how my flowers were going there, I could do that. I could, I could lift this off no, I already got it down on the card stack. It's okay. It's pretty. The, the, the flowers are falling. Um, yeah, you just want to play. I think this would be one that's good. I think this one would be better in portrait. And then the last one, this one here could be either direction. I wouldn't get, unless your paper is seriously directional, try not to be like me and get real hung up on all of that. Um, a lot of times when you run your your paper through an embossing folder, the the loftiness of it distracts your eye anyway. Um, so try not to fuss too much about that. But those will be the four layouts that you will get. I didn't want to we could be here for way more than an hour if you were to, if we were to put these all together, all four. But I just wanted to show you how quick and easy this one large pattern broke down into the four card fronts that you're um, that you're using. Hi, Doris. Oh, now I'm finally seeing all the suggestions you were making. There must have been a lag um, 
when I was trying to decide what embellishments to use that I couldn't see anything. And then all of a sudden there's all your suggestions. Um, but you know what? That's okay because I have three more um, kind of blank canvases here that um, I could use those there. I could use these there. Um, let's, you know, wherever, uh, what other embellishments that I have. And then, you know, here we could put, we could like, could put happy birthday. I really seem to like my sentiments tucked down into this corner, but they don't have to be. They could be up here, you know, they could be anywhere that you want them to be. Let's see, I'm just gonna try and put them in different areas so that they all look different. And then maybe put that one maybe right there. Now keep in mind, where is your ribbon gonna be? Um, do you want, maybe you're not even gonna use ribbon. You don't have to use anything. These are pretty simple and, and quick with just a sentiment and some embellish, you know, some rhinestones or something like that. Um, what I wanted to show you, here's some ideas that I had. For the doilies, one of my ideas, now this one I had folded in half, but, and then didn't like it. But what if we took, we cut some of our doily off so that it appears that it's sticking out from underneath this designer series paper. And what if we layered our sentiment on there? Now these are the wrong color, so you would want your greenery from that die set of Heart and Home. But if, let's say this was Garden Green or Evening Evergreen, you could tuck in some sprigs, you know, Imagine these are not cinnamon cider. Um, well, let's do this. Let's do this. In the doily package, you get three different colors. You get the cinnamon cider, basic gray, and the misty moonlight. So what if you were to, you know, put a doily on there, do with it whatever you wish, Layer, layer your sentiment, sentiment on there. And then, you know, add it, add your, your greenery. You could, you could really dress, go to town dressing your card up by what you add, by what you add to it. Um, but if you're going for I need to make a lot of cards um, and you could do this easily if you were like doing, um, oh, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? Like you would do all of one thing first and then, you know, go and do the second step. I, my mind is blank right now. I'm so sorry. But, um, you can either go for quick and easy, whip them out, or you can you can adorn them and get a little bit, you know, um, oh, my, you guys, my mind is like fried today. I don't know why I can't think of words, but you can dress them up. You can dress these cards up really, really well, or you can dress them down and keep them even more simple. It just depends on what the occasion is and how many that you need to make. So, um, assembly line. Yes, Vesta, thank you. <laughs> oh, my goodness. The words were just escaping me. Sharon, I'm so glad that you like the layout. When I did this, I thought of you, and I thought, I think Sharon's going to like this layout. Larger pieces 
you know, it's only going to look like you cut a bunch of small pieces when you look at the card individually, but I, I think it really helps to, you know, if you can cut larger pieces and just chop it up to make it look like you did a lot of work. <laughs> you went to a lot of work to make that card. We want to, you know, we just want to not work so hard, you know, to come up with something. So I am going to continue to fuss with my layouts later today. I hope to have them all done or this evening. I think I'm going to fussy up some of the, um, a couple of the cards using the doilies. And the doilies are retiring. Um, and in fact, the doilies, the denim ribbon is on sale. 30% off. So the denim ribbon would be $4.90. The heart and home doilies are 10% off. So $4.50. But you get 30 doilies. And remember, this is a good investment. Remember that you might have three colors, but the other side is white. So if you would need a white doily, flip it over. Or if you want to um, use your blending brushes and any other ink that you've, that you've got, you can customize the doily to whatever color palette that you're working with. So these are, in my opinion, these are a really good investment. Um, you can, oh, doilies always help really make a card really pretty. And the fact that you can use the other side to customize your color, I think is like a no brainer. So, um, yeah. And the designer series paper, 10% off making that pack of 12 by 12, $10 and 35 cents. And it's while supplies last. So, um, with the last chance items, I wouldn't think too long on, the stuff that's on your list, some things will go faster than others. Um, but just keep in mind that right now you can save some money on some of those items as they have been marked down. So that's, that's today's project. Um, I have a stat. I went through my designer series paper packs and this layout here would make beautiful Christmas cards. Use up your designer series paper from last Christmas or whatever you've got. This layout will make quick and easy Christmas cards. Cute um, juvenile or kid designer series paper that you have, the penguins or something like that. This would make a really, um, it's very versatile. And if you're like me, you're going to start looking at all your your packs of paper and you're like, oh, what would this layout look like if I did it in this, in this designer series paper? So I think this is one layout that you could keep the pattern in a notebook or wherever you keep um, patterns that you like to go back to and, you know, keep this pattern for sure. That's just... That's just for me. Vesta has Christmas on the brain. Okay, well, wait till you see the new mini catalog. I ordered my catalogs, by the way. So those of you who have placed orders with me in the last six months, um, I will be mailing you a catalog. And the celebration, oh my goodness, celebration starts in July also for the months of July and August. So you'll be getting those catalogs in the brochure from me. But um, they've got some nice Christmas stuff in the, the new mini catalog. They also carried over the painted Christmas designer series paper from last year. One of my favorites. Remember when we did the, the Cardinal Easel? cards I used that paper um in that in that card so 
it's back, so don't worry if you ran out and thought, oh, gosh, I wish I had more of that. You'll be seeing that designer series paper pop up again in the new catalog. But um, Susan did hers in Christmas today. All right, well, we can't wait to see them. Okay, well, you know what, everybody? I'm going to let you go for the rest of the day. I can't wait to see what cards you make. Please share them in the group, Quilt Cards and More. If you're not a member of our private community, if you go to the Chirpy Card Maker page, there's a tab that says um, Groups. And there's two groups there. There's the Quilt Cards and More, which is a private community. The other group is for my, my team. So um, choose the Quilt Cards and More and request to join and just see all of the inspiration that that is found there from everybody sharing their projects. We share a lot of, it, it's quilts, it's it's where the and more comes in. Um, it's a little bit of everything, and we love it. So please join the group. And um, I think that's it. It's I'm not going to see you till next Thursday, which is going to feel strange because I've been live three times this week already. But um, I'm always here if you need me to answer any of your questions. I, I try to reply really quickly. So, um, yeah, we'll be, we'll be seeing and talking to each other before next Thursday. Everybody have a blessed day.